Uh, please help me welcome with our spirit fingers, our keynote speaker tonight, Rick Roberts. Thank you very much. And I would like to invite you to unmute if you don't mind. If you want to unmute, unless you're at a construction site near the airport during a hailstorm and you've got a cat and dog barking in the background, we know who we, those people are. But if you're not that person, you just want to laugh out loud, it definitely helps the timing and the engagement on my end. So feel free to unmute, laugh. It won't interrupt me. It'll just encourage me to keep on moving forward. And, uh, you know, when we're separate like this virtually, I find it the, one of the best ways to communicate is to hear and to see. So feel free to fully engage. If you're unmuted now, just make a little bit of noise so I can tell that you are. Yay! All, right. All right, well, let me start my contact Woo! tracing app and let Bill Gates know where I'm at. Okay. So, <laughs> it's such a crazy world we live in and you guys live it, you speak to groups, but sometimes you have to do it virtually now. and. We have all this stuff we have to do to prove that we're able to speak in front of groups now. People are asking for vaccine cards and things like that. Um, you know, I went and got, early on, I got COVID tested here in Wilson County, which we're in the county. We don't have all the stuff that Metro Nashville has. Our COVID-19 test was multiple choice. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's up to the old Fauci standards right there. But I guess, see, they gave me a Merle Haggard CD. So I listened to that for 14 days by myself in quarantine. Everything worked out good. But I understand that people have different opinions about the vaccine. You know, me, I wanted to get it so I could travel, be a little bit less worried about it. And I didn't want to wait till my age group got called, even though I'm kind of older, it was like the third tier. So I just started hanging out around pharmacies around closing time. I don't know if anybody else did that wave if you did that. It was a great way to get the vaccine, you know, but it, it felt kind of creepy. It was like dating back in the 90s. I was kind of hanging out by the pharmacy. Hey, ma'am. Yeah, if you don't have any other takers later, uh, can you give me a shot? <laughs> Eventually, I got one. But I've got a friend of mine, Gary. He doesn't want anything to do with the vaccine. The other day, he's like, buddy, I'll tell you one thing. You got to watch what you put into your body. I'm like, all right, Gary, put down the bacon cake, and maybe we'll talk about it, all right? <laughs> but then it dawned on me, if we want every American, I think we're like halfway through now, if we want every American to get it, we just have to put it in food, make it edible, right? Just there make the vaccine, <laughs> deep fry it, smother it in butter and icing and make it shaped like a rifle. That's what Americans want. <laughs> and, you know, I think we put Paula Dean in charge of the whole operation. She'll just, you know, prep the area with a stick of butter, <laughs> put a little blue bonnet on it, you know, inject the vaccine with a big turkey baster. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as distribution points, McDonald's has the most locations. Let's just make them just distribute <laughs> everywhere, you know. You can put it in food we're already eating too much of, you know. Every day you drive by and see 20 more million vaccinated right there on the front of the sign. <laughs> it, you know, put it in the Pfizer fries. That's what I would get, you know. <laughs> you by in the morning, get a McDonough McMuffin, something like that. <laughs> And if we're honest, that's really why Americans don't like to wear a mask. It just slows down all of our eating. <laughs> yeah. But I don't mind wearing one. To me, I'm just doing it for others. And plus, my wife told me I look better when I wear a mask. <laughs> and, uh, it took me about three days to figure out what she was really saying. <laughs> Less of your face to see, the more I like it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, but then you've got the other side, the people who don't like a mask, they don't want anybody to wear it. And I don't understand that. Just make your own personal choice and be kind to others, right? That's the way we should live life. Uh -huh. I was headed into a Walmart the other day. I'm about three steps out. So I go ahead and put my mask on so I don't forget. And this lady, I don't even know where she came from. She's right up in my face. She's like, sir, I don't know if anybody's told you this or not, but you don't have to wear those things outside. It ain't a good look for you. and It ain't doing nothing for you at all. <laughs> I took a step back and looked at her wearing socks and Crocs and pajama top. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> if anybody told you this, man, but you don't have to wear that outside in public. <laughs> it ain't a good look. It ain't doing nothing for you, Karen. You might want to get tested. I think you've lost your sense of taste. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> of course I didn't say that, but I was thinking it real loud. <laughs> but we forget that this affects everybody differently. And that's the one thing that we can all agree on. We don't know how it's going to affect us until we get it. I saw even that, you know, animals are susceptible. Uh, about a month ago, the San Diego Zoo reported two of their gorillas came down with COVID-19. 
<laughs> you know, first off, shout out to the zookeeper who was swabbing those nostrils. <laughs> 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 I hope you still have your arm, buddy. <laughs> Even the crocodile hunter is like, I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> And then people are afraid to fly because they might get it. But I was thinking if you do get it on a flight, that's the best place you could be. You just push a button, you get an oxygen mask, pop right on down. <laughs> I'm a problem solver. And then there's companies that try to help out. The big word last year, we all heard it was pivot, right? You can't do things normally. How can you pivot and help others? There was a CBD oil company here in Nashville that was getting ready to open their doors first day and all of a sudden everything got locked down. So instead of making regular CBD oil products, they made hand sanitizer out of CBD oil. I don't know if it killed the germs or just made them really lazy and ineffective. <laughs> what are we supposed to be doing anyway? <laughs> What's the number for Grubhub? <laughs> but everybody learned stuff this past year. And I guess that's the best thing we can take from all of it. You know, even my third grader, you know, she was doing her homework a couple of months ago. She goes, Papa, what does the term non-essential mean? <laughs> I said, oh, how do I explain that to a third? I said, well, it's something that's nice to have, but you don't have to have it. Do you understand? She looks right at me. She goes, oh, yeah, like your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or your college fund. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's my time. I'm going to break down what I just did for you so you guys can learn some of the techniques I just used. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to relocate my camera a little bit down so I can share some things with you. But my name is Rick Roberts. That's a little comedy for you. Kick things off. I love it, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we can see how my messy my office really is right here. All right. So uh, just out of curiosity, I know you know people speak and do different things with, with what they speak about. But how many folks have tried comedy at any point? Uh, an open mic. I know Jason has. That's where I met him first. Oops. Hold on. Let me get this sucker straight. There we go. Anybody else try comedy at some point? I see quite a few hands go up. So a lot of things that I just did there in comedy uh, with a comedy set, you can definitely apply to your speaking as well. And, you know, especially when you're doing short topics, that was about five minutes, I believe. Um, and so when you're doing a five minute speech, you've got your point to get across. You've got to engage the group. You've got to establish who you are a little bit. I find, you know, I do speaking as well as comedy. And when I, I'm around other speakers, a lot of times I see them just launch into their topic as if everybody knows exactly what they're talking about and who they are and where their point of view comes from. And they miss out on the opportunity up front to give them a little insight as to who they are so they can understand where they're coming from. And in the set that I just did, you know, the, the first joke I did was, um, you know, well, the first thing initially was just about unmuting yourself unless you're in a traffic condition or by the airport. But that's establishing the fact that I know how these things go. We all know how virtual events go now, right? If one goes without a glitch, I'm, I'm kind of suspicious if it actually happened. There's always something going on. So I just try to establish that I'm on the same ground floor you guys are with this technology. And my camera will probably flip over here in a second because I'm still learning all this stuff too. And so that's your initial little icebreaker just to kind of let everybody know. My next was a little contact tracing app thing about my phone, but really uh, what that was is me checking my watch so I knew how I could start, stop on time. So how many speakers have you seen that go long? I went to see a guy speak on productivity once. He went 45 minutes over his time, and the next speaker had to cut theirs back to 15 minutes. So here's a guy talking about how time management is important, and he wasn't able to do it. So I always do some kind of joke about my watch or something up front just so I can make sure it's running and I don't go over my time out of respect for other people. So that you could apply to your speaking engagements as well. Uh, the next joke I did was about getting my multiple choice COVID test out in Wilson County. So it's a short little joke, but I, I like telling that one because it gives the audience a little insight that I'm not a city guy. I'm not, you know, some white collar guy. I'm just a blue collar guy out in the middle of nowhere. And that's, I grew up in Versailles, Kentucky, just out of sight of Lexington. So it's, it's very similar to Wilson County in that sense that I have kind of country tendencies. And maybe my voice might sound a little country to some people. Um, I've been in Tennessee for 20 years, and, and Tennesseans still sound more country than I do. But to some people, it gives them, oh, that's why he's talking a little bit funny. Just one more insight to who I am and what I'm talking about. And then I kind of launch into the meat of the set. And this set was all about COVID uh, early on. 
you know, a lot of groups obviously canceled engagements. I had over a hundred events cancel last year or reschedule or turn virtual. And, you know, I was so frustrated about it that as a comedian, I, I wanted to express my frustration through comedy, but I also am fully aware that some, it's devastating for some people. So I didn't want to, to put the target of the joke on people that were sick from the disease. I wanted to put the target of the joke on people who are impatient with others because they're the people at this point and, and with every topic that's out there, the people that are impatient and short-sighted that need talking to, as my dad would say. So as I've gotten older and done more comedy, I don't mind taking a few more, not chances, but being a little bit more um, strategic with my comedy and, and try to alert people that their opinions may not be the opinions of others and try to encourage them to listen to other people and see different points of view. Now that's, to the typical club comedian, that's boring and not funny, but you know, we just we just had fun together for five minutes, and we discussed some serious topics without saying, "I hope COVID's here forever." I mean, people who have it are you know, hurting. We didn't talk about any of that. We talked about what? We talked about the mask, which everybody has a frustration with, even if you're wearing it constantly, like I do. Um, I'm still frustrated by it. I'm not going to pretend that I love wearing it. You know, I don't have to brush my teeth three times a day now. That's great. You know, there's some, there's some, some advantage to it. I can start growing a goatee. Nobody would know. But most people have frustration around the mask, no matter what you're talking about. And then the people who love telling people not to wear a mask, I don't think they get spoken to enough. So that's my whole little part about the lady at Walmart. And that was really a combination of a lot of different people that I've engaged with over the past year. I mean, we all have family members that are whether we're pro mask against it, they're on the other side of the fence and you know, this it's so much coming at you. So I just kind of took a lot of different things and then try to find a way to make it funny without calling her anything. I just addressed the way she was dressed so that I could get back at her a little bit, which brings up another um, approach to doing comedy is turning the tables on someone. So you see comics, you've heard of like Don Rickles is a great insult comic. He would come out and just start, he would just rail on everybody. And that was his thing. I don't know how much of that would still work today. Although I feel there's probably a group that wouldn't mind just being railed on because they haven't been railed on for a while, but that was his shtick. Most comics have to win the crowd over. And the same thing applies to speakers. You, you really need to win them over before you take a jab at anybody or a jab at their point of view. Hmm. Most speakers are trying to take you on a journey from here's where you're at today. And I want you to walk out of this room with a different mindset. And people won't go on that journey with you if they don't know where they're at in the first place or why they should. And so you establishing your point of view is very important to do that. And then you bring them along. So I wouldn't start my, my set out with attacking some lady verbally outside of a Walmart that just attacked me. I wanted to warm you guys up a little bit and see my point of view, see that I'm not an aggressive person, but I also have some opinions about aggressive people. So I try to put that in the middle of the set. It's actually kind of hard to do in a five minute set. It works better if it's 15, 20 minutes into a show, but I wanted to put that in there just to kind of show you guys the, the way that you can turn the tables on somebody is have them verbally challenge you first. If you're speaking to a company or an organization, you can use this technique by having somebody that you make up in a story, have the opinion of their competition. All right. So if you're doing a speech for Coke, Maybe somebody is doing something pro Pepsi and they're, they're being aggressive towards you and you come back at them in a certain way. But it's one way to introduce um, a character into your show that also is synonymous with a mindset or a way of thinking. So that little part, I like that. It's a lot of fun. It's got different techniques in there that help trigger the laughs. So I'll talk about that in just a second here before we wrap up. Uh, and then it, I kind of took myself out of that went back to goofy mode a little bit with the, the gorillas, the apes, you know, and that wasn't about the apes catching it so much as it was a zookeeper had to swab the nostril and I had to respect somebody that probably didn't sign up for that when they took a zookeeper one-on-one at whatever zoo college they went to. And then the CBD oil joke, that was something I saw on the news here. I thought, well, that's interesting. If, what would happen if I use CBD oil? Uh, there's a whole approach to comedy called if this, then that it's, transfer of logic. So if this is true, what else could be true? So if they're making this out of CBD oil, what could be the after effects? And so, and I understand that CBD oil is not the same as marijuana and I understand the THC and all that stuff's not in there, but to the average person in my audience, that's 
not too far of a leap to go. So they join me on that. And then again, I'd like to end letting the audience know something about me, just like the beginning. So I ended with the joke about my daughter in third grade to make it a little bit more, more human, more connective and a different point of view than my own. And I did that same technique again, right? She is a turn, a reversal, a turn in the table. She said something negative about me. She was naive when she said, you know, your hair, it's not essential. It'd be nice to have, but you don't have to have it. But that gave me the okay to say, Hey, or like your college fund, that's not essential. So lots of different little things in that five minute set. There's, there's a whole lot more in there uh, that we could break down if we have time. And I want to check with somebody on my time here in a second to see uh, how much I have. I wouldn't mind taking a few questions in a second. Um, but I know, um, I think the three things I want to leave you with really quickly too, if I can squeeze this in here. And I don't know if it's Steven or Jason's keeping track of my time for me now on this, this side of things, but you just want to give me one of these, like tell me how many minutes I've got. You're fine. You're fine. Like three minutes left. You're good. Okay, great. So let me share something and then I'll, I'll share one other thing with you. So for people that are serious about try, trying to learn some funny stuff, you know, it'd be impossible to me, for me to cram everything in here, but I do have a, a virtual class coming up pretty soon. I just want to show you something. I've got a couple of free resources for you too, if you enjoyed this kind of session here today. So I'm going to share my screen here. I think you can probably see that. Let me make it a little bit bigger, but I'll also send you, uh, there's a link going to show up in the chat box. So, okay, I think you guys can see that. All right, three things every joke has to have, and I'll send you a little worksheet on this if you're interested. A target, a trigger, and a technique. You need to know what your target is in order for, for the joke to land. If you don't know what your target is, the audience will never figure it out. The trigger is the word where everything changes. It goes from being a sentence to a joke. And the technique, you know, there's, I use 15 to 20 different techniques, is what goes on top of the trigger to pull, pull it back. So those three things have to be in every single joke you write. Uh, like I said, I teach a class on this. I've also got a podcast, 100% free podcast, 235 episodes all about comedy. But if you're interested in that and you have time for it, uh, it starts next Thursday and it runs for the consecutive Thursdays after that. Uh, there's a link I'm gonna pop into the chat box right now if you wanna look into it, my schooloflast.com forward slash Toastmasters. And there's a, a link on there if you want to sign up but at the bottom of this page and the reason i really want you to go to it uh, the set that i just did for you there's a video of it uh recorded on the tv show and then there's three little free downloads below this video one is a program assessment so you can look at your current program or your topic you're speaking on to see where there's opportunities for humor where there is already humor then there's actually word for word the comedy set i just did for you so you can kind of see where things move around and, and how it's structured and then I did a podcast, especially and specifically about this particular set, how I prepared for it leading up to the TV taping. And then there's a second podcast if you want to hear how I broke it down afterwards and what, you know, what I would change about it. So some free stuff there on the bottom of that page at schooloflast.com forward slash Toastmasters. Um, I know that what you speak about, everybody speaks on different topics, is important. If you have humor attached to your takeaway points, it'll be sticky and they'll remember it. If you don't have humor, they'll be looking for the next speaker to come up and give them some. So use it, uh, use it wisely and God bless you guys. Hope you, hope you have fun with your speeches whenever they come back around, <laughs> live or virtual. And thanks for letting me be here, Steven and Jason and everybody else.